Hey everyone, welcome back to Platinum Off-Road. Today I want to talk to you guys about the idea of a drag link flip kit and track bar relocation. Now what we did on this vehicle, this is the Rubicon Express Crow Molly and their forged track bar setup, uh, as well as their uh, track bar drop bracket, as we see here. Um, now, the reason why you go with a drag link flip kit, uh, the first reason is because once you start getting a lot of elevation, uh, whether through your lift kit, obviously you're going to need to correct some geometry. And so whenever you leave the factory drag link or even factory drag link mounting point here below the knuckle, what happens is that drag link is actually sitting at a very harsh angle. Okay, uh, So the fact that you can get that drag link as flat as possible uh, and on horizontal axis, uh, the better off you are. The reason is because whenever you undergo a heavy acceleration, uh, or even the uh, instant braking, what you're going to find is your steering wheel jerks uh, from one side to the other depending on accelerating or braking. And then the reason behind that is because this drag link, when your frame goes up or down, uh, you're going to take with it this end of the drag link. So you, because this is mounted to your gearbox, it's going to essentially go up. Now obviously this is mounted down here and it's going to stay put uh, as your tires stay on the concrete. Uh, so what's going to happen is your, as your frame lifts up, the radius that this is going to float on is it's actually going to want to go up and kind of over. Well, because of everything underneath it, uh, holding your frame centered to your axle uh, and all the control arms and such, you're actually going to end up pulling on that steering gearbox. So as you do lift up and this drag link wants to go this way, it's going to essentially pull on your pitman arm over which is going to take your steering wheel with it and vice versa with braking. So the idea of a flip kit is to help correct that geometry. Uh, what it also does is it puts some stability back into uh, the, the steering components itself. You'll feel a little bit more power back behind the steering wheel as you're not putting so much pressure on that pitman arm and gearbox. Um, the, like I said, the more uh, horizontal you can get that tra that track, sorry, drag link, uh, the more uh, leverage you're going to put back in your gearbox. So aside from correcting geometry and leverage, uh, those are primarily the first concerns that why individuals go with a flip kit. So what we want to do is we want to also mention is the fact that whenever you do this flip kit, you're going to want to make sure that you also readjust the mounting point of the track bar, which is what we did over here. So essentially if this rises up on this side, if this rises up a little over three inches, you want to go ahead and drop that side or bring up your track bar a little over three inches. So uh, we went with the Rubicon Express Forge track bar. We also went with their Crow Molly Drag Link flip kit and as well as the Rubicon Express uh, relocation bracket on the frame side. And um, one thing I, I started to notice is as soon as we left the shop with this setup, uh, it was just very unstable. Now, I want to go ahead and show you a quick clip of what happens and when, when this is effective is the fact of whenever the front and rear axle are going independent of each other over road bumps, we started to notice that the steering wheel uh, seemed to pull and tug in each direction as the frame of the Jeep uh, was going uh, through its motions from the front and rear axle. So uh, the next clip real quick is going to be what that looks like. And we want to show you just over a soft bump in a neighborhood uh, what it looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it does. And uh, we're going to come back and see what we're going to try to do to fix that. All right, so back at the shop now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just take a quick glance at the current geometry of this system and what we are going to try to do to get it fixed. Um, so like I said, everything was sold uh, or purchased together, installed together, and almost instantly we noticed that it just wasn't exactly what we wanted. Now, over bumps, over straight line bumps, yes, we were able to get rid of uh, the steering wheel jerking back and forth, um, which is similar to bump steer. Now, full on bump steer is often caused because of the drag link position in relation to the track bar position. Uh, what that means is if you were to draw a line from the mounting point of the drag link first mounting point to the second over here as well as draw another line from your track bar mounting point 
to the axle side track bar mounting point, you want those two lines to actually run per, uh, parallel to each other. And the reason why is because as those two components go through their radius, um, the radius arch under their range of motion, you want those two to complement one another. And so what's not going to happen is the frame is not going to undergo pull, uh, or I guess the axle, if you want to say, is, is going to want to travel through and carry this way, while the drag link is trying to carry a different radius. Now, they are at different lengths, so you can't expect them to have the same exact radius. However, what we focus on is getting those as parallel as possible, so that way you're not fighting each other. Uh, true bump steers, whenever the two components are not in parallel to one another, and yes, they end up fighting each other. Uh, if you've ever done a flip kit without relocating the track bar, uh, you will definitely experience that. Um, so anyways, uh, looking back into it all, what we've done is already here. We've seen some of that. It's not too far off on geometry. However, however, we, we definitely don't like uh, some of the feeling in the steering wheel over uh, soft road bumps. Uh, anytime that the front and rear axle articulate, uh, you know, inverse of each other over certain road bumps uh, and curves in the road. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in with a new bracket. We're going to go ahead and move the track the sorry the track bar yeah back up to the factory mounting hole we're going to keep this as a brace because we like the fact of how it helps support uh, the frame side but uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this moved back up and we're going to cut off the factory track bar mount on the axle and what we're going to do is we're going to weld in the synergy uh, weld in kit so let's go ahead and take a look at that weld in kit and then we'll get started on the job all right guys so here we are We've got the Synergy Weld-In Bracket. This is for the JK Series, Dana 30, Dana 44 um, front axle. And this is a real simple setup. Uh, they've already went on ahead and pre-welded all the mounting brackets that you're gonna need to get this welded to your axle. As you can see, you've got the tube radius already cut in it. You do have uh, positioning points to put in your uh, sway bar links once it's all done. Another thing with it is you're gonna have multiple holes that you guys can use even all the way down here to your factory point um, so you know this isn't necessarily for a full relocation if you want to use this just for stabilizing and beefing up what you've got going on underneath there uh, it's totally an option to go with but for us however we you know mentioned before we need to relocate some of the mounting points to see if we can get better performance out of our steering so we'll go ahead we'll get this the old one cut off and weld it on and uh, cut off the old one and weld on the new one and we're going to focus in on i think we're going to end up using this top hole uh, to compensate for the movement that the that the drag link flip did so if you measure out that center uh, mounting point similar to the ball joint center point of that uh, rod end and measuring to the new mounting point that's what we're going to focus on we want to get as close as possible uh, from point A to point B uh, from what the actual drag link moved. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, we'll catch back in a little bit. So we've got everything stripped down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're actually going to cut uh, on the bracket side of the welds here on the top and then uh, as well on the bottom. Uh, the key to that is cutting somewhat right between the actual weld itself and the bracket material. That way all you'll have to do is just give it some love, maybe pry bar or a hammer and uh, knock it off. And then all you'll have left to do is just grind down the uh, what's remaining of the factory weld. Now it's going to be difficult to get in here uh, because you do have the sway link tab. 
Uh, it's going to be difficult to get in here, so we're just going to go ahead and knock that off with the plasma. Uh, if you've got a cutting torch, uh, that'd be good to use there as well if you don't have a plasma tool. Uh, anyways, uh, or otherwise you can get a, um, you know, a long reach uh, cutoff tool that will allow you to get the disc down in there and cut into that weld. But anyway, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get this started and then we'll uh, get it prepped and ready to weld. factory is off now what I wanted to show you here is whenever you get in here with the plasma um, or even a torch you're going to be left with a lot of that weld left over so try to use a torch or plasma as least uh, time as possible uh, what you really want to do is you really want to try to get in there and cut uh, like I said bracket side of the weld as much as you can split the joint between the weld and the bracket uh, so what you're gonna end up being left with is just enough of that or about half of that weld that you're gonna have to polish down it is a lot less than what you're gonna have to deal with on this side if you were to torch your plasma uh, cut that so again that's an important reason uh, it saves a lot of time and effort to get it taken care of that way anyway so we're gonna go ahead and polish it up and get it prepped for weld and keep moving along all right guys so here we have it we've got the bracket on and um, you know what we ended up doing is uh, we found best fitment for it um, by keeping the vehicle at ride height. Uh, so therefore, just you know, putting it back, pulling the wheel, and putting it on a jack stand, and um, getting it in there, setting it up, making sure that it aligns well with the other side of the track bar. And also, what we ended up doing was rather than getting it perfectly um, parallel to the upper control arm mount. If you notice, if you put a dial degree indicator on the factory mount before you pull it, um, if we end up looking at this joint right here against the control arm mount, you see that we're pitched slightly forward, and that's because this axle, once we put the lift kit on it, we went ahead and we added additional caster to it, uh, getting it up in that five to six degree range. I think we're floating around just under six degrees at the moment in time. Anyways, um, so, you know, we wanted to make sure that it helps with good fitment for that track bar. We don't want that track bar to be bound up in any way. Uh, and so the least amount of binding as possible is the best way to do it. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and throw on some paint, put on our uh, Sway Link tab here. Uh, it's, so when we did this, the factory one was over here. But since it kicked over this way, yeah, we were able to actually move this just to the right position to where this now... Uh, becomes the new hole and it'll face this way uh, still aligning just where it needs to be so uh, we'll go ahead and get some paint on it and get it wrapped up Well, folks, there she is. So what we want to look at now is the final geometry of this. So if we look and take a closer look at the pitman, on, pitman arm mount uh, in relation to the track bar mount, they're just about level. Um, so then we're going to come over here as well, look at one compared to the other, okay? It's not perfectly uh, on the same axis. One might, the track bar looks like it might be just a little bit lower, but it's definitely uh, a much better variance than what we started with, you know. I uh, definitely feel that getting these higher, getting the track bar higher up on the axle side is going to help these two follow through 
and uh, carry through their own radius and complement one another a little better than what we were dealing with. But the true test comes from a little test drive, so we'll go ahead and get her out and uh, check how everything drives and see if we can get a quick recording over the same bump and see if we find any difference. So here we are back at the original bump. What I wanted to do is to show the fact that uh, we took the initial recording before doing any geometry change off of this and we want to show the difference and seeing uh, the result of that. So let's go ahead and creep up over it. So we saw just a little bit of shift in the steering wheel. Here's a little bit afterward. Okay. So we saw a little bit of shift in the steering wheel and um, but we saw a lot more stability compared to what we had before. And uh, we're hoping uh, that now this can start to make sense for, for some of you guys that uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on with maybe your steering wheel over bumps. Uh, maybe you've changed up some geometry. Uh, you've done a flip kit of some sort. And now you're kind of wondering why you may have some instability when you're going over bumps when you thought a flip kit was supposed to be good for you. So I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys. If it was, uh, please go ahead and subscribe for more videos that we'll do over time that help out with issues like this. And give a like to the video. We'll see you next time.